But after looking at the case, I came to understand that this verdict required extraordinary trial skills and incredible perseverance by incredible lawyers, and that's why they're nominated. The case comes out of Amador County. Amador County is a rural, extremely conservative county between Sacramento and uh, Lake Tahoe and the Sierra Foothills. You know, people up there think, uh, think Donald Trump's a uh, pinko commie. <clears throat> In that setting, Chris and Jennifer obtained and Andy protected the largest verdict in the history of the county against local doctors and nurses and the largest employer in the county. They represented Cree Miller. He was a six-year-old boy at the time, and when he was seven weeks old, he was brought into the emergency room by his mother and his mother's mother's grandmother. They were concerned that he was fussy, uh, he wouldn't stop crying, and the grandmother reported that maybe he had some blood in his, in his mouth. He was checked out by three nurses, a nurse practitioner, and a very experienced ER doctor, and they found nothing wrong with him. They had a little scratch on his eye, and uh, they gave him some eye drops and sent him off. Next day, he went in to see his regular nurse practitioner. She reviewed the ER records, nothing wrong, sent him home. Three weeks later, he returned to the hospital. This time, her in, his injuries were so serious that the hospital couldn't treat him, and they put him in an ambulance and sent him to a hospital in Sacramento. While in the ambulance, his legs uh, start, stopped functioning, and uh, it turned out that he had a uh, broken vertebrae in his back, and he was paralyzed forever from the chest down. The treating radiologist said that he had been, quote, slam dunked, close quote. And that term is a medical term, I guess, uh, but it comes from a basketball term of slam dunk. And he said what it does is somebody slams a baby so hard into a crib or some other surface that the child actually flexes so hard that it breaks a vertebrae in their back. And that's what happened to, to Cree. So the case went to Jennifer Lothar, which one of the amazing things about this case is he was, he was uh, taken away from the parents and put in foster care, and the foster mother fell so much in love with Cree that she, uh, she adopted him. And brought the case to Jennifer, who's a local lawyer in Sonora. And she wanted to find out what happened. She got the medical records, and she found a note in the medical records that there was a small one-centimeter bruise next to his mouth and a scratch around his eye. And he had what's called pedici, which is kind of a rash-like uh, condition. And the records reported that the mother said that the small bruise was caused by flea, uh, Cree uh, flailing his arms around when he was agitated. Well, she knew that an infant who can't crawl can't injure himself. So she sued the hospital and the doctors for, among other things, a violation of the Child Abuse and Neglect Reporting Act. Now that law requires that certain people are mandated reporters. And that means that when they have a reasonable suspicion of child abuse, they need to call the California Department of Child Protective Services. They, of course, said there was no indication of child abuse. In fact, they pretty much laughed at her. The doctors offered her a waiver of costs and a promise not to sue for malicious prosecution. She eventually brought in Chris Keene, who's a specialist in child abuse cases. And Chris, like Jennifer, knew that it was not possible for a seven-week-old child to injure himself. And in fact, it turned out that the hospital actually had some criteria that were indicative of child abuse. One of the criteria was injuries found on exam but not reported by the parents. Bingo. A second was claims of self-inflicted injuries for children under six months. Bingo. They also determined that if any reasonable investigation were done, that there would have been a bone scan, and that bone scan would have found prior injuries, seven-week-old baby, prior injuries of a broken clavicle and broken ribs. Now Chris 
felt there was one thing he really needed to know. Why did the mother say that he injured himself when he was in the hospital? So he tried to find uh, the biological mother, the birth mother, and uh, he called her and called her. He, she wouldn't return his call, said, I'll talk to you later. So finally, one day, he just drove out to her house and sat there in his car and waited until she came home. And when she came home, he walked up to her and said who he was, representing Cree, and he's trying to help him, and he needed to know one thing. He needed to know, why did you tell the hospital that Cree had hurt himself? And she said, my mother told me. I lied to the hospital. And she agreed to testify at trial. And when she got on the stand, here's what she testified to. She described a riveting and incredible story of her own child abuse. The defense's whole case was about how the grandmother was such a wonderful woman and she was a saint and was taking care of the child. But it turns out, and this is a quote from the testimony that uh, the mother described her mother as a, quote, monster who was terribly abusive to her both verbally and physically, so abusive that she ran away at the age of 14 and, of course, fell into an abusive relationship with a 17-year-old boy and they had a baby. And, she, and they didn't have the ability to support themselves, so where did they end up living? With her mother. It was a toxic environment. It seemed almost as if her mother and her boyfriend were in a competition to see who could be more abusive. She testified that her mother told her that she had to stay with the boyfriend because that's the life you choose, so this is the life you're going to live, and you deserve to be hit because no one ever wanted you anyway. So I submit to you that the verdict in this case represents the amazing work of dedicated